What you'll need. A Yamaha DX7 II, of course. A computer running Windows. A MIDI cable or cables. A MIDI interface. MIDI aux. And DX, which is optional. First thing to do is hook up everything such as power to the DX7 II and make your MIDI connections. The important connection here will be the one plugged into the MIDI in on the synth so we can receive data. For all the important connections, I'll be using the MIDI cable with the red ends. I'm also plugging a cable into the out port as well so it can be used as a controller. This connection is optional as it isn't needed to send patches to the synth. Just keep in mind the cable with the red ends will be used for all the important connections. For MIDI interface, I'm going to use a device for MIDI Plus called Spy. This device has both in and out ports for MIDI. I'm going to use both, but the important one here is MIDI out. Using the red ended cable that is plugged into MIDI in on the DX7 II, we'll plug the other end of that cable into MIDI out onto the interface. If you choose to use the DX7 II as a controller, you'll also want to plug in the other MIDI cable into the MIDI in port on the interface. Now with all the connections made, we can move on to starting the synth up and preparing it to receive data. To get started, we need to turn off Memory Protect. We're going to need to hit Edit and then 14. You may need to hit 14 several times to get to the Master Tuning Memory Protect menu. Next, at the Memory Protect menu, we are going to use the cursor to move over to Int and hit Off to turn it off. While still in Edit mode, or just hit Edit again if you're unsure, hit Button 32. With this menu, you can select where we're going to send the Cynics data. The first block holds banks 1 to 32, and the second holds banks 33 to 64. We can only write to one block at a time, so we'll need to select a block we'd like to start with. Use the off button to select banks 1 to 32, and off for banks 33 to 64. Then we can hit single to exit the menu. DEX is software you can get for free. You can use it to test out patches before you send them out to your DX7 II, or even use it as an easy way to craft your own sounds. Make sure to set up your audio output so you can hear what's going on. You can also set up a MIDI controller if you like. If you have a MIDI cable plugged into the out port of the DX7 II, you can use it as a controller by selecting your MIDI interface. To ready up some patches, we're gonna go down to the bottom left and hit cart. Next, we'll go to load and find the Cynix file we'd like to load. You can then test them out by clicking the keys or by using your MIDI controller if you've set that up. Now that you have some patches you'd like to send to the DX7 II, we'll move on to MIDI aux. Once it's booted up, the first thing you want to do is make sure it works with your MIDI interface. On the top, we'll select Options and then MIDI Devices. The device I'm using is called Spy, so I want to make sure that's on the right-hand side. Do so by selecting it on the left-hand side. Another important step is to adjust the output timing buffer delay. To get there, we're going to hit the third folder on the top right. This will open the Cinex View scratch pad window. From here, we'll click the Cinex tab and then select Configure. About halfway down, we'll see the setting we want to adjust. Originally, it's set at 120 milliseconds. I found this isn't enough time for things to probably get written onto the synth, so I've doubled up the time to 240 milliseconds and haven't had any issues. Let's move on to finally sending those patches over. In the top left, we're going to select the second folder. We are now prompted to select the file that we wish to send. As soon as you hit open, the transfer will begin, which you can monitor on both your computer and the synth. And that's it. You've loaded patches onto your DX7 II. It's that easy. Thanks for watching and have fun programming.